What's going on guys? So we are back and I am back with the homie from Lewis. You guys can see right over there. What's up guys? <laughs> but today we are actually going to be doing a remote start for you guys. Um, if you guys can see down here, we do have everything we need to do the remote start. Uh, I'm going to have Lewis actually explain some of this stuff just because he's a little bit more knowledgeable on how all this works. So this uh, is going to be the module that actually controls everything. Uh, it's a Viper DS4 remote start. Uh, DS4 Plus. This works with <clears throat> most newer vehicles. With my Integra, it actually doesn't work. Um, you have to do everything manually, but it's fine. For uh, Jose's Honda, it's going to work on this one. Uh, this is his wiring harness. So thankfully for us, it comes, or you actually have to purchase the wiring harness separately. But uh, this is going to make everything nice and easy, plug and play for us. Other than that, we're going to use these adjustable wire strippers so that we can military splice. I'll show you how to do that later on. Uh, this is going to be so we can poke a hole in the wire so that we can, again, military splice some zip ties to put on the ends of the military supplies so that they don't come loose and then some tape so we don't have any exposed wire um, I'm just gonna have a my basic drill with a Phillips flathead or I mean with a Phillips end on the on the drill to make it easier for us to take all the panels off um, and then this is gonna be our wiring diagram so nice thing is you guys can actually download this app onto your device and it basically explains how to do it right I don't know if they'll have access to it Oh, really? It's only for for me for for like uh, car installers, yeah. Oh, just kidding, guys. Yeah, but you can hit up Jose. We can send you screenshots. Um, but this is what we're gonna follow right here. So basically, when we open that up, it's gonna have all of these wiring, uh, all the wiring in there. So we're gonna be able to wire it up just like this. The only two wires we're gonna have to do is this one right here and this one right here. That we're gonna have to splice into. Uh, if we didn't have the wiring harness, these are all the separate wires that we'd have to splice into throughout Jose's car. Uh, luckily for us, it shows right here too where these wiring harnesses are going to be located in his car. So this should be pretty easy for us to do. Uh, shouldn't take us more than about an hour and a half, I would say. Never done it. Well, I've never done this before. Lewis has done it before in the past, but we are going to attempt to do it on my car. So hopefully, if everything turns out right, then this video should be up live on YouTube. If not, then uh, I guess you guys will never see this video. <laughs> nobody will ever know. Exactly. Nobody ever know. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, let's get started. Later. All right, so when we open this up, the first thing you're going to be able to pull out is the actual module right here. This is your DS4 Plus. This is the brain where everything's going to plug into, um, which we're going to go ahead and program this through the computer. That's going to be step number one is programming this. Other than that, pull the rest of it out. This is going to be the remote, which we'll program at the very end. This is just the basic remote. They have upgraded remotes, but for now we're going to go ahead and just use this guy. Jose is going to upgrade that later. The cool thing is you can actually use the factory remote, right? Like your factory key fob? Sometimes. On some certain cars, you can. Yeah. On yours, I think you can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is going to be the hood, hood pin switch. So basically lets your car know if the hood is open or not. So if you're doing an oil change, you lay down on the key. It doesn't accidentally turn your car on. Uh, so this is important. We're actually not going to install it on Jose's car because his already has it installed. So that's going to be like for older vehicles. But most newer vehicles should already have a hood pin switch, so it'll be able to detect that. We'll test it out though. Uh, this we're not going to use either. This is a temperature sensor. Uh, pretty much detects the temperature. So in colder places, like say if you're in Detroit and it gets below zero, it's going to turn your car on just to keep it nice and warm, help uh, prolong the life of your of your engine. But with us. It's just going to run into problems. It's going to be turning his car on uh, in the middle of the night for no reason. So we're going to just throw this thing away. We don't need that. And we don't get below zero here. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really get that cold here. Except when we went to Utah. <laughs> uh, this is going to be just another wiring harness that's going to go uh, plugged into our DS4. And then this, those two wires that I showed you guys that we're going to have to splice are going to be somewhere located in this bundle of wires, which we're going to have to figure out later. Um, other than that, it comes with two stickers which we'll go ahead and install on Jose's car later on. <laughs> and then this is gonna be our, uh, our transmitter for our remote. So this is what's gonna send the signal um, from the remote to this, to the DS4 to actually turn the car on. Other than that, you just get, I don't even know, I've never, oh, reference install guide. We're not gonna follow this. We're gonna throw this away. <laughs> we didn't really do instructions. And then uh, 
this right here is just going to be for those thieves. There we can go ahead and put, or actually this one, because this is in a security system. So this we put underneath the hood of the car so that if he's ever getting anything installed at a mechanic or anything, they know that he does have a remote start installed, okay? And then just a quick little myth, I guess. Uh, this is a remote start, right? It's not an actual security system. It's not a, it's not a security system, just yeah, a remote start. The cause, security system's an add-on. Yeah, because I know that's a lot of thing when I used to, uh, at work when we sell these, a lot of people got it confused. They were trying to buy the, the actual like um, security systems thinking that was a remote start, but that's an add-on to this, right? You have, you have to purchase this first. Yep, exactly. And then you add the security system on top of that. Got it. Yeah. So this guy right here uh, for 2400 core, it's going to be THH0N5. That's going to be the wiring harness, um, which is going to make everything plug and play for us. Pretty simple, hopefully. So these are the wires that we're going to be running throughout his car. More wires. More wires, <laughs> yep. The and then, uh, filled with wires. yeah, other than that, it's just going to be our basic tools. Really simple job. It's not too complicated unless you're hardwiring everything. Then you might want to take it to a shop. Yeah, so luckily we do have a little bit of experience on how to do this stuff. Uh, obviously, I've taken my car apart a couple times already, so it shouldn't be too difficult. We're going to go ahead and start taking off the panels in Jose's car so that we can get access to these, uh, to these harnesses right here. So it tells us right here the... A and B are going to be located right there, C and D are going to be under there. So that's going to be pretty much under the knee bolster and then on that side trim panel right there. So we're going to go ahead and start removing those panels so that we get access to these uh, wiring harnesses. Alright guys, so the first thing I kind of did to remove all this was take this part off. Um, just it's wedged up underneath so you can pull that down. Um, next thing I did was I removed, um, it was a center console. Steering column. Steering column. So there should be two screws down here. Uh, I've got to remove both screws. Uh, top part should pop off. Once the two screws comes off, you can pop this down. And then this whole bottom con center part of the console is basically just clipped on through pressure clips. So you kind of just have to pull it back. Um, but just try to be a little bit careful because you don't want to crack anything or break anything. Um, but once that comes off, you should be able to access everything underneath. Um, as you guys can see, uh, we can see all the wires and this is basically where we're going to be plugging and unplugging stuff. Yeah, so one other thing guys, just make sure you're unplugging your wires. Like right here, Jose had some fog lights. Um, he has a security system down here that we had to unplug. Um, and then the only thing you never want to unplug are these yellow wires right here because those are going to be your airbags. Um, you're going to get an airbag light on your uh on your dash if you unplug those so try not to unplug those but other than that now we're going to start finding our wires to sh to uh splice into all right guys so the next thing we're going to do is plug in all these wires um this is the t harness wire that we be, we're going to be plugging into um it's pretty con it's pretty simple plug and play what we're going to do is basically disconnect the ones we have here uh plug the it should be either the white or green wire um in our case it's actually going to be the white wire behind this green one unplug that plug it into this green harness right here and then plug in the other green harness back into where we first pulled out that first white wire same thing is going to go for the brown one there's a brown uh, harness down here unplug that plug that into here and then plug in the other harness back into the one where we just unplugged it so it's pretty plug and play um so i'm just going to quickly show you guys how we do that uh most of these clips are basically just are uh, like pressure clips as well underneath that you just push which See, as you can see, I can feel the brown one right here. Unplug that. And then the white one should be... Oh, here it is. The only hard part is trying to find out where that little button is. There you go. Just like that. So, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the screen one. Plug it into that right there, just like that. Go ahead and grab the brown one and plug it into the brown one just like that. 
And then from there, you're just going to go back and plug these in to where you unplug the first ones. So, only difficult part is trying to see which way these go. And this one's going to go. Make sure we don't cross any of these wires. I think the hardest thing right now, Lewis, is going to be having to hide all these wires back in here. And um, yeah, we're going to get that console back on. We're going to have to do some serious zip tie work down there. <laughs> so that's going to take a little bit longer than it is uh, plugging these wires in. I think it clipped on. I didn't hear a clip, but... I heard it. You heard it? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. So as you can see, that was pretty much all you needed to do. Um, the other step is trying to figure out what this one is, which... What was this wire again? Um, I don't know if it's actually that wire, but there's two more wires that we're going to have to plug in. Uh, we're actually going to have to splice into them like we told you guys earlier in the video. Um, one of them's kind of an optional one. It's going to be for the headlights, so when you turn the car on, it's going to flash the headlights when it turns on, which we want that. Um, it's going to look a lot nicer. It's going to show people when you're... Uh, turning the car on that hey look you know my car's turning on right now so we're gonna do that one and then there's one more super important one that's gonna be ran to uh, it's called our can wire which is actually gonna tell um, the DS4 to turn the car on so that's one of the main wires that we're gonna have to run so we're gonna do those next and we'll show you guys where those are gonna be located and how to military splice into them yeah so these wires too I'm just gonna run them through this opening I found and then we're just gonna have to do some wire tucking later probably gonna look something like that once we're done um, but just a little bit of a cleaner look and as you guys can see here we have access to the rest of the wires down here just like that perfect so all right guys so basically um, you do have to get down there and take kind of some of these panels off as you can see we took the fuse box panel off so it gives us access to all this area right here and as you guys can see if Lewis, can you move your hand for a second yes um, we have all these fuses down there the harness that we're going to be looking for is just right on top of that and it's going to be that green harness right there you want to show them Liz? this one right here yeah so we unplugged it from right here uh this is where it was plugged in originally i know it's kind of hard to see with my hand but that's where it was plugged in so we unplugged that on the wiring diagram just to ensure that it's the right one we just counted the number of pins so in here you can see one one two three four five it goes one two three four and then there's a uh, another 11 pins on the top so we counted them made sure it was the right one and then it says that we should have a brown wire with a red stripe on our f number four pin, yeah. which is gonna be this guy right here. So this wire right here is gonna be our can wire. This is what we're gonna need to splice into. Um, so we're gonna cut a little bit of this or of this uh, electrical tape so we can get access to more of this wire. We don't wanna strip it with just this little wire. So we're gonna try to get some more length on this guy. And then we're gonna military splice into it, which we'll show you how we do. Um, after that, we just need to uh, get into the uh, headlight wire and then we should be all good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shove my pick tool into this electrical tape up here and then just rip it. Like I said, all I'm doing this for is just to get us some more length on this wire. Yeah guys, so, and as, while he does that, I know it's a little bit intimidating to take all these panels off but keep in mind, a lot of these panels are actually just held on by pressure clips. So as you can see, this is where a lot of these pressure clips go into, um, just spots like that. So there is a little bit of force that's required. Um, like I said, though, try to be careful because you don't want to break any of these panels or you will need to replace them. Um, and then we replace space, or took off all these panels plus that one down there. Hey, we broke one of them though. We found it at the junkyard. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if you do break one, chances are you'll find your car at the junkyard, the parts for it. <laughs> Especially if it's a Honda. <laughs> all right so we got enough w length on this so we're just gonna go ahead and splice into it now so these are our wire strippers they're adjustable wire strippers here so if we want the if we have a bigger wire we're gonna go like this or if we or actually if we have a smaller wire we're gonna tighten it if we have a s smaller wire we're gonna loosen it uh, we want to loosen this one because we want to be a hundred percent sure that we're not gonna actually strip or uh, rip his connection otherwise we're gonna have to butt connect it it'll still work by butt connecting it it's just a lot a lot riskier so what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip one side pretend this wire is the wire that's coming from the harness that came uh the t harness that came with the uh package that jose bought so we're just gonna strip a little piece of this off just twist this guy here and rip that off so now that we have that stretched we're gonna get this go right in the middle of the wire this is that wire that's connected to Jose's car. We're gonna pull that apart. 
we're gonna grab our pick tool and then we're just gonna rip right through this make a nice little hole there shove this wire through put them together like that and then we're just gonna twist them together like this and then now the side with the two wires to avoid getting uh, extra tension when it, just in case if something ever pulls on it we're gonna add a zip tie here and then we're just gonna tape this connection off this is called military splicing it's a really effective way of doing this so that we don't actually have to rip his uh, wires if he ever wants to sell the car we can just pull this wire straight out like that and then we could tape this back up and then nobody will ever know it will be nice and new um, but that's what we're gonna go ahead and do down there I just wanted to show you guys up here to make it a little bit uh, easier to see can you see that? Yeah. We're just gonna go nice and slow. Oh, these wires are so thin too. So, we have a little piece right there. I want it to be a little bit bigger. So, I'm gonna go back in and just pull it apart. And we're gonna do that one more time. That way we have a nice long strip so we get a solid connection. Now, we're going to grab our pick tool, go back in here. Be careful, these pick tools are sharp, so you might stab yourself and you will bleed. They are really sharp. But it will take a little bit of force to punch through these sometimes. But now that we what got happens it, if uh, they accidentally cut that wire loose? If we cut the wire, we're going to get a butt connector like this. Um, you're going to need a bigger one than these purple ones. We're going to twist two of the wires together um, and shove them through one end. And then, so we would connect it here, the butt connector here. And then our other two wires would just connect to the other end of the butt connector. So it'll be the same thing. Uh, it's just annoying. We don't want to do it that way. For one, it's annoying. And two, like I said, we don't want to rip this harness if we don't have to. So, yeah, so just be extra careful when you guys are cutting that wire. Yeah, just take it nice and slow. Cause if you get those adjustable strippers and you don't adjust it to the right size, um, or if you just have some little cheapy ones, it might rip. It might rip your wire the second you pull, you push on it. Cause I was going like that, but if you squeeze all the way, it's just gonna rip the wire. So you have to be really careful. All right, so now we're gonna come back here. I need to see what wire I'm connecting. So it says light green is gonna connect to that pin four, which is brown red. So we need to look for the light green wire. Should be located in this little bundle of wires. So we're just gonna pull this tape off. Uh, this is all tested tape, it is pretty strong. So don't be scared to rip it. We're gonna have to rip some of it so we get more access to this wire. And as you can see, our light green wire is right there. I know it kind of looks blue, but I've done these a few times and I know that's what they mean by light green. All right, so then we can go ahead and tape these back off just cause we're not gonna use them. Um, so we just twist them up, tape them back off. This is the wire that we're gonna actually use. So we're gonna strip this end of it. We're gonna do a nice long piece. Usually if you're doing a butt connector, you wanna just do a little small piece like that. We're gonna go in kind of long, probably Maybe right about here. You see how it didn't rip the wire? I need to tighten this a little bit. Now it should rip the wire. There we go. See, and then a nice little trick. I'm just gonna twist this uh, end of the rubber before I pull it off. See, and then when I pull it off, it's nice in one unit so I can shove it through this hole. That's what she said. All right, so now we get this little hole right here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm gonna put it right through there. All right, and then we're just gonna twist this wire around the copper. Try to make sure it's not gonna come loose no matter what. This is gonna be protected by a panel that Jose's gonna put back in, but it still is next to his feet. So we don't want his feet accidentally pulling on the cable or anything like that. So we have it like that. Of course, you don't want the, uh, the connection to be exposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some tape and a zip tie, and we're gonna go ahead and finish this connection. Again, this is gonna be able to avoid a little bit of tension. So this is why we added zip tie at this bottom part, just so that if we do pull on it, hopefully it's 
not going to pull on where we made our connection it's just going to pull on the harness itself so we're going to zip tie that nice and tight and we're just going to grab a small little piece of tape just like that and then we're just going to go ahead and tape around this connection try to pull the tape nice and tight just for that extra added security when you're going around that's perfect and then we're going to cut our zip tie I would use flush cutters if I were you guys but I don't have them on me right now so that'll have to do alright I'm going to tape these up we don't need any of those wires in correct? we don't need any of these wires nope um, these harnesses are pretty universal for most Hondas so that's why they add all these wires because in other Hondas maybe in newer years uh, Honda Odyssey I don't know they would need these just in case I always like to fold in a little piece so that I have a little tab to pull on that way I don't have to go searching for where I left it all right now we're gonna go ahead and put uh, we're now actually we have to find the parking light so that his parking or so that his headlights go off when we start the car all right guys so this big white box right here is for all his fuses. Um, so it told us. Let me show him something real quick. Hold on. So do you guys remember that green pin we pulled out? Well, that green pin was this one right here. If you guys look to the right top part of that, you'll see this big white box. That big white box is basically going to have that cable, which should be a red and black cable. That's our parking cable, and that's the one that Lewis is going to show you right now. Yep. So. It's this big white box right back here. Um, it's saying that we need to find a, the red cable with the black stripe in it. So I found that guy right here. It's right around in the middle of it. But there's all these wires right here that are kind of in our way. So this one's going to be a little bit trickier to splice into, but we're going to do our best. Uh, this one, definitely important. We don't want to cut it still, but uh, it's just the parking brake, so it's not as important. Um, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and splice into this guy right now, though. So same procedures, we're going to get our adjustable strippers, go ahead and slide your wire in. And I had to tighten this up last time when I was shipping the other wire, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen it up again, because I don't want to cut this wire. Now that it's loose, we're going to go ahead and strip it. And I'm sorry if I'm blocking your guys' view, I just want to make sure that I'm not cutting it. Same thing here, we're going to do it two or three times just so I get enough wire to get a nice good connection so it's nice and spliced now you can see right here is our connection we're gonna go ahead and shove our pick through it to split the wire Oop, I lost it Once we get the wire split like that, we're just gonna go ahead and strip the other end. Uh, the wire that we're gonna be connecting to it is gonna be this white wire, which not gonna reach. So we're actually gonna add a butt connector and extend this wire. Um, I don't have any white wire on me, so I'm just gonna extend it with some black wire. But we're just gonna add a butt connector here and then add black wire to extend it so that we can reach it all the way over there. And then we're gonna do the same thing, military splice. So we'll go ahead and start doing that process now. so as you guys can see this isn't really too hard it is basically just like a plug and play and cut a couple wires here and there um, only intimidating part uh, like we mentioned earlier is taking these panels off if you've never taken them off before and then making sure you take your time uh, splicing some of these wires just because you don't want to completely uh, splice them or cut them off you kind of just want to splice just enough to where that copper is exposed and then you're able to insert the other uh, other wire into it so. and like I was mentioning I definitely recommend buying these um, what are the name of the, these tools again Lewis? oh these are adjustable uh, wire strippers that. All right, go back under here. Right, 
so now we're good we just need to make sure we plugged everything back in let me cut that Not anywhere all right cool we're done uh all right guys so part of the instructions so when you get your ds4 the module we're gonna flip this up this is where all, all of our fuses are gonna be when we open it up we're gonna see these fuses just like this for different cars these fuses are gonna be in different locations if we take a look at our Honda Accord it's gonna want this 15 amp fuse uh, right below the 5 amp fuse so we're gonna go ahead and take the 15 amp fuse that was just right there and we're gonna go ahead and just plug that in right below the 5 amp fuse and that's basically all you have to do for this you don't have to program it or anything right no that's it so if you guys have made it this far into the video as you guys can see the installation for the ds4 is pretty easy it's literally just plug and play um, but there is going to be an issue that you guys are going to run into because it's an issue that we ran into um, so originally we thought that the ds4 was pre-programmed turns out ds4 is not pre-programmed you do have to program it yourself um, so basically what that means is the ds4 is actually programmed through a software called through direct tech um, unfortunately, not everybody has access to that because in order for you to have access to direct tech, you do have to have, do or do have to be a retailer that spends, I think there was like a minimum of $2,000 a month um, in order to get access to their software. Um, luckily for me, I do have Lewis who has access to that, but basically what that means for you guys is if you need to flash this module, you either A, need to know someone, or B, you can probably, um, I'm not saying that this is possible, but it's just an option that I was thinking of, a solution for you guys, is going to a car shop that does this type of installations and maybe possibly seeing if you can sweet talk yourself into maybe paying them a little bit of money for them to basically flash the module for you because flashing the module is literally the easiest thing. Um, through that software, it basically just asks you a couple questions about your car and then from there, they just connect it to their systems and essentially just flash the module within like 10 seconds. So it's super easy, um, but like I said, unfortunately that is an issue that we are gonna be running into and that you guys run into. Um, so um, if you guys finish off the rest of the video, you guys will see that we successfully were able to flash the module um, and we did get the uh, DS4 up and running and now my car luckily does have remote start. Um, but like I said, that is an issue that we did run into. So hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the video and like I said, um, I did want to put this part of the, or did want to explain this part just because I know there was a little bit of confusion towards the end of the video um, because we obviously were a little bit confused thinking that it was originally Flash when it wasn't. So like I said guys, um, if you do want to proceed with this, chances are you will either A, need to know someone or B, possibly maybe sweet talk yourself at a car shop and having them flash it for you. So like I said, pretty simple, but other than that, once you get to that part, the rest of the video should be a breeze. Um, as you guys can see we basically put everything back together um, put the antenna which is like a little module on the windshield and then the remote um, obviously the remote we just had a, a pair up with a little module or the DS4 um, and it was up and running in like after you know like 10 minutes of us just uh, having that our module flash hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the video <laughs> cool so now we're gonna go ahead and line this up make sure that we have everything. So we have our 5 amp fuse at the top, 15 amp fuse right below that, 30 below that, and then 220s right there. So it looks like we're all good. We're ready to go ahead and uh, start programming this guy by plugging it into the car now that we have everything connected. All right, guys, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and just follow these instructions right here. So the first thing it's gonna tell us to do for the DS4 Plus is gonna plug in the 12 pin main wiring harness uh, to power it on. It says the LED will turn on solid blue for one second to confirm Bluetooth connection. Um, wait until the LED turns on solid red before proceeding to the next step. Next step is just going to be connecting the rest of the harnesses. Um, and then we're going to insert the key and turn the key to the on position. And then, but yeah, pretty much we're just going to keep following these until we start pairing the remote. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the instructions to Jose while he plugs everything in. So go ahead and plug in that 12 pin main harness. It says the LED will turn on solid blue for one second. Wait until the LED turns on solid red before proceeding. Solid red. That's orange. Did it go blue first? Jose. No. It didn't? I didn't see it. It didn't go blue? I didn't see it, no. Um, let's see. And then we need to connect to this guy. We're not going to untangle this yet. This is, like I said earlier, this is the... Uh, what's going to tell the remote to turn on and off. So plug this in, one end. No, 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 just plug it into the light one, it's fine. 
Okay. All right, there we go. So we got everything connected there. Insert and turn the key into the on position and wait until the LED turns off. Well, first off, there was never LED. It's fine, just turn it on. Okay. Okay, take the key out. Let's see. Take this. Alrighty guys, so we basically finished up the install and I am super hyped. Um, so going back a little bit, we originally thought we weren't gonna be able to finish it today because we weren't able to program the little black module box. Uh, turns out you can actually do it through Bluetooth. Um, actually, I'll have Lewis explain a little bit on how to do that part um, and what he did. Um, just because he, he was able to take it to work and get the, uh, the module programmed. Um, yeah, because apparently we thought that it was pre-programmed because um, that's what we kind of found out online and stuff but turns out you still have to program it um, so for anybody who needs to do this um, just know that you can do it through Bluetooth and you do have to download the app on your phone um, but you want to explain a little bit of what you did that worked <clears throat> yeah it's pretty much the same thing as the app except it's hardwired so uh, pretty much plugged in the DS4 the module to the computer um, which at work we actually have a flasher um, and like I said we have access to Viper's um, to all of Viper's systems at my work. So I just flashed it through there. It just asked basic questions like if it's an automatic or manual transmission. Um, you can't do it on manual, can you? You can do it on manual, but you have to bypass the clutch, which I actually don't know how to bypass the clutch. Oh. Um, but a lot of manuals, it's you can't do it because you can't do takeover. So meaning when you open the door, it's gonna turn the car off no matter what, even if you remote start it. Um, but yeah, so took it to work and then just plugged it into the computer. Uh, flash the software, just asked what kind of car it was, and then took it back outside, plugged it in, and it was working. So Yeah, so you want to show them a quick little demo? This is the control right here. Yeah, so this is the control right here. So pretty much, if we press the button, I'm not going to do it with this button right now, but if we press it, it's going to turn the car on. Uh, but for Jose, he's going to do, so this is lock, right? Unlock. So this is lock? Yeah. So if he hits lock, unlock, lock on his uh, factory key, it's gonna turn the car on. So let's go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> Take one, <laughs> cut. <laughs> Take two, cut. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. So it's because his car was actually unlocked, so I had to lock it and then I could do a lock on my lock. Do you want to lock it? I don't know. It's the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, watch out. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we have a little slight uh, it was dilemma. Like perfect. <laughs> But yeah, so as you guys can see, the car is on. Um, and if I hit the brake, actually, it will actually turn the car off. What? Um, so watch, if I hit the brake, just completely turn the car off. So then to start it back up, just to keep it simple right now, we're just gonna press this button. We just press it once. It should turn the car on. I don't think it matters if the door's open or not. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. So you wanna show them how to keep the car running? Yeah, so basically what you're gonna do is just insert the key. And then once that key has been inserted and twisted to the on, bu on, on button, you can hit the brake. And then from there, you can kind of just drive away. And the same thing, just put it back in the park. And then, boom, just like that. Yeah, so once you guys remote start it, the engine's already been cranked, so there's no need to crank the engine. So just put it to the on position, plug the key back into the car, and then you're good to go. Yeah, and then we do have the little module up here. Where is it? So that's the, actually, this is the antenna, right, Liz? That's the antenna, yeah. The antenna, the module's actually down here, sorry. We hit it in there so you guys can't see it. Um, but as you guys can see, we can still lock the car. 
So yeah guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, that's pretty much gonna be it for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below or hit us up on Instagram and make sure you follow this guy on Instagram as well. At Filmer Lewis. Oh shit, there we go. <laughs> Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next one.